Okay, here we are in part two of our um, hepatic disease um, videos. So what happens when you, when you have a patient with hepatitis? Well, obviously there's a, an inflammation. The itis is an inflammation of the hepatocytes. In acute hepatitis, the, it's usually reversible and it will probably be mild and transient as far as any decreases in drug metabolism. So usually if it's, if it's this short-lived, you probably don't have to make any big changes um, in the dosing regimen of the drugs that are cleared hepatically. However, with chronic hepatitis, this is often irreversible and um, changes in metabolism will eventually necessitate a change in the dosing regimen because of permanent loss of the enzyme activity that is needed to metabolize drug, therefore a decrease in hepatic clearance. Why is this not working for me? Hmm. There we go. Um, in cirrhosis versus hepatitis, this is a permanent loss of the hepatocytes. Um, we see a decrease in the Vmax, which decreases your intrinsic clearance. This decrease in intrinsic clearance will increase the free fraction for high extraction drugs. Or, I'm sorry, the free, not the free fraction, the fraction that escapes first pass effect for high extraction drugs, and it will decrease the hepatic clearance um, in general of low extraction drugs. In cirrhosis we will also see a decrease in blood flow because um, the hepatocytes are replaced by that non-functional connective tissue and therefore blood cannot flow through there. So you'll see a decrease in liver blood flow which will again decrease the clearance of high extraction drugs. We'll also see a decrease in binding proteins that are available, um, increasing and increasing the free fraction. This one is increasing the free fraction. So both AAG and albumin are made in the liver and therefore they will not be made in the quantities that are normally available and you may see a decrease in the volume of distribution. I'm sorry, an increase in the volume of distribution. Yikes, I need some caffeine. All right, so let's talk about low extraction drugs. These drugs are the rusty dairy that have the kind of grumpy workers and not very good machinery. So as drug comes in, the rate limiting step is the intrinsic clearance and fraction unbound. So if this is the rate limiting step, if we look here in the denominator, then this is much lower than this. This is going to fall out of the, of the um, equation here. And then we'll get clearance is equal to Q times intrinsic clearance over Q. These two Qs will cancel and we get clearance approximated by enzyme activity and binding. This is for low extraction drugs. Now if we have the other extreme, we have the high extraction drugs. This is our shiny dairy where the um, equipment is new and the workers are happy and they're working really hard and so what the rate limiting step here is Q. This is going really well, but the Q is the rate limiting step here. So in this case, Q is less than the intrinsic clearance times fraction unbound. So the Q falls out of the denominator, leaving Q times intrinsic clearance times fraction unbound over cl intrinsic clearance times fraction unbound. So that is going to be, um, our clearance will be approximated by liver blood flow. Now, how does this play out? Well, here are some uh, blood propranolol, con propranolol concentrations given orally and given IV. These are healthy controls. These are cirrhotic patients, okay? So these are time concentration curves. If we give it um, IV, we're going to see a quick drop off and then um, this is a log it looks like, yeah. Yeah, this is a log scale. Um, we see a quick, uh, a nice uh, straight line here. So this is our K. The slope of this line is our K. And orally, we're going to see again same thing. You can see though that the C max is much higher with the IV. The area of the curve is much higher with the IV. That's because this propranolol is a high first pass drug. So we would expect to see a larger area of the curve given IV 
as compared to orally. Now, what happens in our cirrhotic patient? Well, what would we expect to happen? We're going to expect the clearance to decrease because of a decrease in Q. And we do see an increase in area to the curve in both cases, don't we? But we see a much bigger difference in the oral area to the curve than we do the IV. Why would that be? Well, because that, that uh, decrease in intrinsic clearance causes an increase in our fraction that escapes first pass effect, therefore increasing bioavailability. So we have an increase in bioavailability and a decrease in clearance, which causes a great increase in our CSS average and therefore our area of the curve. We see the same thing here, but it's not as pronounced because we don't have the bioavailability effect. Um, in both cases, we can see that the elimination rate constant is flatter here, and that's because the clearance is decreased and the volume may be increased as well. Same thing here, it's not quite as pronounced, but there is a flattening of the elimination curve, therefore showing that their half-life is longer. So very interesting. The big profound effect is in the high extraction drugs given orally because it affects both bioavailability and clearance. So I'm going to just show you that here. So again, what, here's our equation for the fraction that escapes first pass effect. If we have high extraction drugs, Remember, Q is, is the rate limiting step here, so Q is going to fall out of the denominator, and FFP is determined by Q over intrinsic clearance time fraction on bounds. So when this decreases, we're going to see an increase in our, in our um, fraction that escapes first pass effect, and we're going to see rate dependence because of this first pass effect issue. Here are some other drugs. Um, given with healthy and hepatic cirrhosis uh, information. So bioavailability, clearance, volume, fraction unbound, and half-life. So here we're going to see the, the um, bioavailability remains about the same here, doesn't it? And our clearance is about, is quite similar here, a little bit decreased, right? Volume is pretty similar. Fraction unbound, a little bit increased, not changed much though, right? Um, so cefatimet, I would be curious um, about its clearance. It certainly isn't, it's certainly not high extraction. Um, I'm not even sure it's cleared by the liver because there isn't really much change here, is there? Let's compare that to metazanol. Here's our Healthy controls has a bioavailability of 0 0.07. Hepatic patients with hepatic cirrhosis, wow, it's four times, right? It's 0.28. So we have a significant increase. And we can see here we have a low bioavailability to begin with. So we're suspicious that this drug could be a high extraction drug. Let's look at the clearance. Oh, a normal clearance is 80 liters per hour. This is definitely a high extraction drug, right? Because What's 83 divided by 90? I don't know, but it's close to, it's very high. It's close to 1, right? Um, so, and it is decreased, but not a whole ton. Uh, there is a decrease in liver blood flow, so we would expect to see a decrease in Q. Um, but the clearance is not changed as much as the bioavailability is here, right? Volume distribution is also increased a little bit, not a ton. Uh, the fraction unbound was not determined. This doesn't have a huge effect, so I wouldn't expect that it's very highly bound. Half-life is increased because there's a decrease in clearance and an increase in volume. That makes sense, doesn't it? For Rapamil, let's look quickly here. Normally we have about 22% bioavailable. Again, we are suspicious of it being a high extraction drug with this. And look, oh wow, it's, it's more than doubled, okay? So again, a big difference in bioavailability um, and a big decrease in clearance. And again, this is a high extraction drug because the healthy patient has um, a very high clearance. So this is a high extraction drug. Um, we can see the volume is much larger. This is a highly bound drug um, to albumin and AAG. Um, so we know that there's a change, increase in volume and a decrease in clearance. We're going to expect a big change in half-life, which we do see, and an increase in bioavailability. So probably 
these two drugs are both high extraction drugs. If they're given orally, we're going to be very concerned about making sure that their dose rates are decreased and their dose intervals increased. Whoa. All right, child Pew score. The child Pew score helps us give some idea of the relative, uh, oopsie, we're done. <laughs>